Mr. Jordan, where are you employed? Uh, I'm a county commissioner. Can you envision in your wildest dreams how something could be called a religion that promotes the abuse, physical abuse of women? I wouldn't call it a religion, but I'm not the one that makes the definition of what is a religion. In a small courtroom in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Islam was on trial. I've been under the impression that is, Islam's been a religion for thousands of years, whether I agree with it or not. You know, if it was Sharia law, you wouldn't even be out here right now. The planned construction of a new Islamic center had divided this small city. They should have the freedom to build a mosque here. Yes, it does. Opponents claim the facility would increase traffic, damage water quality, and provide a foothold for radical Muslims and Islamic law. This particular case cries out for a revocation of the permit. Lemma Spinati, a Muslim born and raised in Murfreesboro, attended the hearing. Sharia law supports and dictates the beating and physical abuse of women with a whip. You're to hang a whip up in your house, and if your wife or your girlfriend does not submit, you're to use the whip against her. When the opposition talks about Sharia law, Mm -hmm. They talk about it coming here to America, yes. oppressing women, torture, beating. Mm-hmm. Do they have it wrong? Yes, they do. A lot of things that are culture have been mistaken for religion. The Quran that I've read has never said torture was okay for anyone or beating women, you know, it was okay. None of this is okay. What Sharia is, is a way of life. You know, I am mandated as a Muslim to pray five times. I am mandated to fast during the month of Ramadan. And I'm mandated, if I am able to, to go and uh, do pilgrimage. That's Sharia law for me. Sharia, according to Muslims, is God's word on how you're supposed to live your life. Noah Feldman is a professor of international law at Harvard. He's written several books on Islam and Sharia law. If you look across the Muslim world, you can see a lot of difference in how customs and practices operate among people, all of whom believe that they're following the Sharia. As a general matter, the Sharia is what you make of it. And there are plenty of Muslims who interpret the Sharia in a progressive way so that it's equal towards women and progressive towards women. Prominent Murfreesboro resident Sally Wall helped organize the lawsuit. She's convinced Sharia law isn't harmless. During our conversation, she showed me a photo of a woman punished under Taliban rule. And this is the cover of Time magazine. Exactly. Horribly disfigured. Right. And she didn't have any ears either. You're realistically worried that this could happen here in the United States. It happened to her. In Afghanistan. I understand. There are large Muslim populations in the United States already. I know that. I mean, New York City, we have a big Muslim population. I know that. There's no Sharia law in New York City. It is creeping in though I believe and I think it will creep in as there are more Muslims coming here because that that's what they're taught I think they should try to come into the 21st century meaning do what Uh, assimilate if you would quit covering you would find this a much easier place to live obviously I'm not oppressed I'm married to the imam in the mosque If anyone was going to inflict Sharia law or whatever, obviously it would be my husband. You know, we make the decisions here in the house as a family, just as anyone else would do. Bye, Abba. I love you. Happy day school. Should Americans be worried about Sharia law? Our Constitution prohibits explicitly any religious system becoming the established law of our country. So such a thing would be completely unimaginable in our country, and rightly so. Is Sharia a religion? During the nine-day hearing to stop the building of the mosque... There are people out there who have all kinds of beliefs. 23 witnesses were called to testify. Not one was a member of the Murfreesboro Mosque. I do. If they practice Sharia law, would it still be your opinion that this is a religion? I don't know. In October 2010, in the middle of the hearing, Attorneys from the Federal Department of Justice took the uncommon step of delivering a message to the judge in the case. A reminder that according to the U.S. government, Islam is plainly a religion. We want to be allowed to ask questions. My position is, how do you believe anything if you don't question it? And the issue of whether Islam is a religion has never been decided. 
I thought Islam was considered to be one of the three great religions, right? Can you tell me what you base that on? Scholars have said that. People who study it have said that. Well, you can find an expert to testify hell's a nice house, too. They can claim religion all they want, but it don't mean you're going to come in here and do this in Rutherford County. Council, we very much appreciate that. The judge's decision would surprise both sides in the fight. By November, as the first phase of the Murfreesboro Mosque continued, five miles away, a hearing to halt construction was drawing to a close. Jihad is when... Throughout the trial, plaintiff attorney Joe Brandon tried to link the Murfreesboro Mosque project to Jihad and Sharia law. Does it make you want to look at it with a jaundice eye? Even the county's mayor, a cattle farmer and lifelong Rutherford County resident and a Christian, found himself under attack. Sharia law says the United States Constitution is based upon ignorance. I would not support those things that you just read. What did you vote this place in for? We didn't approve Sharia law when we approved this site plan. You would think that your elected officials would care more about the needs and concerns of the community than about an entity that we know nothing about. Plaintiff Kevin Fisher was hopeful the judge would stop the project. With all my heart and all my soul, I believe we're doing the right thing. You do. I really You're do. You're 100 percent certain. I'd, I'd pray about it every night. How have the last nine months been? Upsetting. Very upsetting. In a one What's been the worst thing? Uh, the effect I think that it's had on the children in the community. Your daughter specifically? She's uh, shown concern about me wearing a scarf out in public. So what do you tell her when she when, when she says, are you going to wear a scarf? That, it, that it's okay, that the people don't hate us. You know, that this is, that there's maybe a few people that are not happy. Do you think people hate you? No, I don't think so. I think that people don't understand what Islam is and that what Muslims are. The threat of subverse Sharia. After nine days of arguments. That's hearsay, Your Honor. We've considered the... The judge, Chancellor Robert Corlew, delivered his decision. It's our duty at this time to deny the temporary injunctive relief that the plaintiff sought. Joe Brandon had lost. The construction of the future Islamic Center of Murfreesboro would be allowed to continue. We're not privileged to render decisions in accordance with our own opinions, whims, or desires. We must follow the law. Should you have focused more on there was a lack of transparency, the commissioners did not do their job, more on that and less on let's talk about Sharia law. Uh, my answer to that is no. We hope to have this case ultimately before the U.S. Supreme Court to make a determination of whether or not Sharia law can coexist with the U.S. Constitution. Will you try to stop the construction again? No, we're going to continue with with lawsuits. On what grounds? I'm not sure what the grounds are going to be this time, but we're, there will be another suit, I believe. I hope it is the end of it, but my gut feeling is telling me not. Why? Um, uh, these people are determined the construction of this Islamic center is going to continue. If they build a mosque, that's their business. And their religion is their business. But when they try to put in Sharia law and usurp my beloved constitution, then that gets on the fight inside of me. If you are saying to me, are you going to give up? No, no. If they are fighting this until the end of it, we will do the same and even more. And we will have something they don't have. We will have the constitution in our sight. The vandalism, the arson, and the gunfire at the mosque site remain under investigation. The congregation continues to raise funds and hopes to begin the actual construction of the mosque in August. Have you met the Muslims in Murfreesboro? Sure. I've known Muslims forever. My sister lived in Saudi Arabia. My brother lived in Iran. Yeah, certainly I have. Have you met the ones who are involved in the, the mosque here? You know, I have not. They have made no effort to get in touch with me, and I have made no effort to get in touch with them. Younger people think 
that I am a bigot and that I am uh, against freedom of religion for are the you, Muslims. I'm you, not a bigot. Are you against freedom of religion for no. Muslims? I think we're worried about our American way of life. It would be great if the Muslims would try harder to realize that, that it's not something personal against them. I would rather you and I sit here 20 years from now and you interview me and say, you know what, I was wrong. I was completely wrong about them. They've been wonderful and peaceful. But you know what, what if I'm right? Look down the road 10 years. How does Murfreesboro look to you? I think it's gonna look like before this whole thing started. I think it's going to die down eventually. And I'm really hoping that some of our opposition, I invite Kevin Fisher to the mosque whenever it's built. And hopefully they'll see that there's really nothing to be afraid of. <laughs>